Hi, so what you're going to need for this tutorial, uh, clay-wise, um, I've got Zernit Pearl in black, purple and the green. This here is just some scrap clay I've got rolled out on a number three. I'm not going to be using it yet, but I'm just letting you know what you need. And then I've got some female black rolled out on a number two, which again is for in a minute. So for these three sausages, again, I've seen variations of this going around now but I don't know what the technique's called but I'll just try my take on it I don't know if it's got a name so I'm just rolling these pearls out into sausages um, and I've got some gold foil here and I'm just going to roll the gold foil around the three of them actually I'll make that a bit smaller so it fits as best I can. Obviously it's not going to go smoothly. Okay, so I'll try and fill in any gaps as I go. You soon find those bits that hang off and that so you can just sort of add them it doesn't have to be totally covered it's going to be crackling anyway but um if you just get it as best covered as you can this is what i call the messy bit of this tutorial come on don't play me yet Okay, let's turn you over. I made that one a bit wide, so any spare I'll add that in a minute. And then the same with this one. And then using this spare, if you'll come in it. Just fill in any gaps. There are a few, weren't there? Not that much. Okay. So it's just a rough covering of the sausages. I think that's enough. And then I'm going to stretch them out a little bit more. So this. Uh, spare gold folders start to sort of fit in where it needs to when i'm doing this i like to have the little circles used quite small when i do it you can do it bigger and i've seen it done much bigger but i find i like the effect of them being small which will make sense as i go everything you're going to need will be written below above the comments below above the comments <laughs> it's nearly an oxymoron isn't it okay so that's roughly where I'm going to do it so now I'm just going to start take the ends off just going to start slicing them as I'm only being lazy and putting the three together to cut them I'm still going to have to separate them so I'm just going to start Slicing them up, and then it's totally up to you how you do it. Probably easier to use this, I'll get them all off at once. So, you've got these little, I say circles, but they don't stay circles for long, do they? But soon, it so you've got these shapes in three different colors, and they're all surrounded by gold. And this is where I'm bringing in what I'm using is scrap clay. Okay, and I'm just going to start applying it round and about. I'm squashing it a little bit so it's quite flat, and then just start randomly adding them as you cut them. Just start 
make sure the edges are touching and just start piling them on. So I'm just going to continue doing that until I've got the whole lot done. Okay, so I've done it now with all of them and I'm just going to actually just oh, I haven't turned my light on. Makes a bit of difference I think. I'm just gonna roll them out a bit and then I'm gonna put this through the machine on a number two. That's what you've got, which looks pretty. I'm just going to burnish it. I probably won't use all this that's why I only did small sausages because I know it stretches out um, so that's roughly burnished for now and then I'm going to cut this in a straight line here and then I'm going to get my piece of um, black femur I'd rolled out on a number two and right okay sorry about that and I'm just going to cut this into a straight line so I know I'm going to be butting those up against each other Now I've got some felt here, I did this before in one of my earlier tutorials and I love the effect it gives. So I'm going to probably have to cut it straight again. But I've got this um, felt which just gives a lovely sort of mottled look. And I'm going to roll it on a number one instead of a two to match that because I know the felt's quite thick so that should make it about even. Okay, and there you go. There's the clay before and that's after so it gives a really nice sort of mottled look so I'm going to cut this into make sure that's straight and I'm going to recut this again make sure it is in a straight line and then I'm going to try and butt these up as best as I can I'm not using a back. I get I get in more of a kerfuffle if I try to get this on the back because it starts sticking before I'm ready and this, that and the other. So I'd rather do it this way. And I'll use this again now just to butt this over. And then the same with the other side. I'll use some paper to burnish that very, very gent. I'm just really lightly taking advantage of the stickiness of Cernit here and then I put them there like that now what have I gone I'm going to have to recut that because there's a mark there seems to have smudged so that's no good start again don't want that okay Let's see where we were hope it butts as easily from this side there it goes. I'm going to be putting something down the middle anyway but I want them to hold if you know what I mean so I'm not actually saying that I'm not putting so oh, yeah I will so I'm talking away to myself thinking out loud Okay, so I'm just applying that little bit of pressure. Where's my rolling pin gone? So that's even all the way down there. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I want to add something down the middle. 
something very fine. What can I use for a I had planned to use something else and it broke. So it broke last night just as I was finishing practicing this. So I'm trying to think off my feet here. Right, so I'm gonna run that's just black. I'm gonna run this black through the machine. I roll it through on a number two and then I'm gonna sort of compress it with a texture sheet. I just wanna put um like a belt down the middle. Um because I think it looks quite nice. I got a practice one I did here, which I haven't finished yet, but if you can see, just putting something down the middle. But the little tool I had for doing that broke. I can try and do it manually, but so at the moment I'm just using I mean choose whatever you like for texture um in the middle but I'm just doing this because it's easy <laughs> and I can um it's not uniform is it so I can play around with it a bit now with this one that broke just look and see if I've got something to hand to do the same thing I have here that's way too big. So I'm just looking for something to give me a pattern. I'm going to have to do it by hand with this. So actually I'm going to do the first line first or the first side cut first so I've got something to follow. So this might not go well first time or it might go fine. No promises. So it's just the little wheel thing for doing that stitching pattern. So I'm going to try to keep it straight enough that I can use it. And if I can't, which at the moment, oh, that's better. I should have done that. Yeah. Okay, that bit up there I'll cut off. That's no good. Now, if I'm looking, I don't know if that's going to be long enough for two. No, I'm going to redo that again. I'm being there. Okay. I've just done it off screen. And then it went fine. Oops, hair. So I'm just going to literally stick that right over the middle. And I just want to cut out some earrings, so with these, I want these at kind of an angle, I think. I'm just looking, I don't know if I'm going to have enough. Yeah, I might do that like that, so I've got enough. And I can burnish where I marked it. Okay, so that's that one. That's supposed to be like opposite, isn't it, on the other side? Oh, I get all Confucius trying to do this opposite thing. Okay, it's done. My head just went totally then I couldn't work out which way to put the earrings. I just had that blank moment. So I'm going to bake these first without a back. It's my way of doing it. I mean, by all means, put a back on now. I'd rather do two separate bakes. I'm just going to move that out of the way a minute. and I should just put I'm going to bake them flat on a tray and then 
I should put a back on them when they come out. I'll just put a back on on a number six with a bit of texture. Now the next thing I'm going to do is the same thing again, but hopefully I'll have a little bit more success. Okay, so I've rolled out, I've done another little centre bit for this. This is going to be a necklace. Also, I've just gone around the edge of this and just mixed it up so I've got a, a mix like that. And then I'm going to use texture again. And I'm just going to put it through again. On a number two with this one because I'm only using crepe paper so it's going to be about the same thickness. How do I want? I don't think I want them that way. No, I want a bit of all the colours showing. So let's cut it like that. I'm going to have to redo one of those earrings because it was only after I'd done them and put them on the tray I realised there's absolutely no blue in one of them. So I'm going to have to redo that. quite happy for this pattern to be going at that angle because of the way I'm doing the actual necklace. This time let's make sure I've got a good bit of colour. I'm going to go down the bottom here and then I'm going to add that there again to separate. And then this time I'm just going to give that a little burnish. This time I'm going to go about that angle, I think. Okay, so I'm going to dome this um, before I put it into the oven with one of those, a uh, larger one of these hand sanitizer soap things so it's just got a, a slight dome and I'm just going to redo the one earring and then I should put them in the oven at the manufacturer's recommended temperature and then I should be back okay so they're all out of the oven and I put a backing on with the pendant I did a number three on the back so I wanted a little bit thicker and with the earrings I did a number six, so I just wanted them really thin but still effective and I just used the scraps from the pattern on the front. Okay, so here's your earrings. And they're really, really pretty, especially that suede effect black, which is really matte compared, you know, against the shiny. And it really, really is effective. So I'm really pleased with those. And then the necklace is, like I said, exactly the same. I just drilled a hole, uh, put number three on the back. And just resin the front. Sorry, I resin the earrings as well. I forgot to mention that. So anything with that pattern, I resined on this occasion. And then I made a few more bits, as you do, because I don't like having loads of scrap left over. So I'll just show you what else I did, because I used exactly the same technique um, and split the dark light, put something down the middle. So they're all done it identically, except for I use different cutters. So I also did, I've only stuck it on a cord to show you. Um, I also did this one. Might help if I put it on straight. I also did this one. And I did these, which I really like these. Okay. So all I did was use the cutters, um, the thing that comes with the cutter, and did that in black. Then just attached a few jump rings. Okay. So hopefully you can see it all clearly. And then finally, I did these. And they've ended up being my favourite of everything. Because they're just cute. And I think we need cute and funny and light-hearted at the moment. 
they got little mush mushroom ones. So all I did there was obviously the split goes that way and I used the matte black for the base and then across the middle instead I textured sort of a rough looking gold belt part. But they're actually my favourite because they're cute. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Oh, I did make some more earrings as well. I might as well show you them anyway. Now these ones I did exactly the same as that, only I didn't I didn't put um, a centre down them. So if you prefer it with or without, you know, you can see both there and then decide. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.